Hi, my name is Wendy Welch, and this is a sample session for one of our draw by drawing drop ins that we offer every Wednesday morning. This session will be focusing on abstract contour maps. So we'll go through the procedure of how to make these um, very interesting drawings. We're gonna make two drawings. And often in Draw by Drawing, our projects are inspired by actual things in the world or other artists' works. So these are both inspired by looking at contour maps as well as a couple of artists who use contour maps. So I'm just gonna show you some of our inspiration for this project before we get started. So this is the project and the two artists I'm gonna show you works of are Nancy Graves and Julie Marutu. Now, each project will take a little bit of a different approach. So the first project we're gonna use pen and ink, a traditional pen and ink, as well as graphite pencils. And the second project we're going to do on black paper with white drawing lines. So just, and we'll start both of these in a different way. So the project was inspired by two artists I really like. And the first artist we're gonna look at, well, first we're gonna look at some, these are just sample, of contour maps that um, are designed. And so they're not actual maps, but they're designed after looking at maps. So these are just two samples by designers. And this one is on uh, black, on white. So just to kind of get an idea of the project. So, so Nancy Graves is an artist who's mostly known for her sculptures. She did these really fantastic sculptures of um, life-size camels, but she also did this project in the 1970s of these contour maps of the moon. And they were based on photographs that she found of the moon, different areas of the moon, and then she made kind of maps of them, but they really read as abstract drawings. So you can see this one is a little more abstract. She's building up layers, but it originally started with the idea of a map. And this one as well, this is actually a print, but it, you know, taking that idea of the map and then redrawing and redrawing it to get a different um, marks as well as uh, abstract composition. And then a lot of the drawings were composed of these really tiny dots, like standing in for texture. And the moon is so mysterious that you know, it could be all these different textures or colors could be standing in for things we don't know what they are exactly. And then this one has a grid and we're gonna work with that idea of a grid because we really associate a grid with maps. And this one is actually of the Arctic ocean, like imagining underneath the ocean. And then you could see they get quite far from the map but the original contour lines are still there. And then the second artist is a contemporary artist who's working today. Um, her name is Julie Marutu, and this is her early work. And it was based on tracings of maps, as well as uh, architectural plans. And this one's called Stadium. So it has that sense of, you know, being in a stadium with flags hanging and just like really huge space but originally they were inspired by, you know, looking at maps, like you can see even these colors are colors we associate with uh, traditional maps. And here's another one of these, and they're quite uh, large. And here you can see many layers of tracing, it's done with acrylic paint. And then she puts, um, a layer of varnish and then builds up on top. So you could see some of the layers really feel like they're far in the distance. And that's a close up just so you can see all the different kinds of mark making. We're not doing anything this complicated, but I just thought it's nice for you to see the inspiration. And just to remind everyone, if you don't know this already, we have our draw by drawing sessions every Wednesday morning, 
10 to 11.30 and it's a $15 drop-in fee. And we list what we're working on each week in the Wednesday afternoon. So they're just announced on a weekly basis. So check into the Java Drawing website to see what the next one is. Okay, so I just want to review the materials. I always like to start off by just talking about the materials. So we're going to start with a sketchbook. This is 11 by 14 sketchbook. We're going to use graphite pencils, different ones like 6B, 4B. So you get different kinds of darknesses. And this is a, a pen holder, a nib holder. And we're going to use, this is called a bowl point nib because it has a round nib, kind of like a bowl. We just attach it into the, the holder. I always keep them separate. So when I'm not using the pen, I take the nib out. And then some India ink, and it's in this nice container. So it's wide enough to be able to dip into it. You might need a sharpener and then an eraser. And then later we're gonna use white Conte on a piece of paper. I mean, this is approximate, my paper is approximately 15 by 11, but any size around that area will be fine. And then we also need a ruler and paper towel, and as well as a rag. And we use them for different things. So those are our supplies. And then what I'm going to start off with, just in case some people have never used um, traditional pen and ink before, I'll just go over quickly. We'll just use a page to practice. So the idea with this is that you, you dip it in so that the ink covers the nib right to the neck. So the neck is the narrow point. And then, so you dip it in and you always give it a little shake because there'll be an extra drop there. And then to use the, um, a pen, a traditional pen and nib and holder, you hold the nib at about a 45 degree angle. And so sometimes if you hold it too high or too low, you're not gonna get a good flow. So just check, you know, if it's not, if you're not getting a nice continuous line, just kind of play around with whether you have it at a 45 degree angle. And one thing everyone's surprised with when we show how to use um, the traditional nib and holders, you can get quite a long line. So I just did a nice meandering line and just uh, dipped the pen in once. Now, because the a sketchbook has a bit of a tooth, you will have to wipe off the, the nib every now and then just to kind of keep it clean. So we'll just do one more. So you, I dip it in. Sometimes I have to hold my container on an angle just to make sure it gets enough. And you see that drop? I have a few drops there. Um, you want to shake it off. Otherwise, you'll have a blob of ink, which I might. Um, and, and just again, continue. So now I had to wipe it off because there was a little bit, I went right down to the bottom and there was some sediment. So it wasn't as smooth, but just kind of go, just kind of practice this. And you know, why I'm doing these kind of curves up and down is you'll feel that one way it's easier than the other because the paper has a grain. So that's basically just using the pen and nib. I mean, there's other things you can do with it, but we're, in this particular session, we're gonna focus just really on making lines, making really nice, beautiful lines. So we're gonna put the pen and nib aside for a bit and draw a grid with a pencil. So when I'm not using it, I really wipe it off. And I do, you know, I. If I sometimes will clean it with water, but for now, we'll just wipe it off. Um, so we'll just put the ink away and then we'll start our first contour drawing. It's a contour map drawing. So 
one of the things we always associate with maps is the idea of a grid, like the longitudinal and latitudinal lines. We'll just take, um, you could take like a B pencil and we're just gonna make a really simple grid. And I'm actually gonna use the ruler to decide the width of my grid because the ruler is one inch. I'm just gonna make these lines and I'm just doing it with a B pencil. It doesn't matter exactly what pencil you use. I mean, cause you could use a 4B and it'll just be a darker line. So we'll just kind of go through. This is kind of a relaxing part of the process cause you're using a ruler, but you don't have to measure which is always nice. So I'm just bringing it right to the edge. There, I didn't go all the way and that's okay. And I'm, it's not, I mean, this is an abstract drawing, so it doesn't matter if things are perfectly straight. So I just go all the way to the edge of the page. Ideally, we would have a, a time lapse for this, but we're doing everything in real time for this demo. The idea is when we do this and draw by drawing, people are drawing along with me. So you can try that if you like. And then I'm doing the horizontal lines. So we do record each session and then you get a recording. So if you miss a session or you, you go to the draw by drawing gallery page and see a, one that looks really interesting to you, we can send you a recording for the cost of the session. It's just nice to be with a group of people and do something that's so relaxing. And what's nice about this project, the reason it's relaxing is because you can't, you don't have any idea of how it's gonna turn out. I mean, I've shown you some map drawings, but that's all you had to go by. Okay, so now we have this grid, I'll just hold it up. And we're using that as a, like the convention of map making. So then, now we'll go back to our, we're gonna do some lines with our pen and ink. So what we're gonna do is we're going to just start it. I'll just hold that up. So again, I'm putting it in and dip, you know, making sure that I get that ink off, that extra ink. Just gonna, so I put it in and then Okay, so then what we're going to start off by doing is just making a little circle. We're going to make about six circles and these are inch squares. So make them about like three inches apart at least, but it doesn't matter exactly where they are, but as long as they're not like right beside each other. And so we'll do six of them because we're gonna use the circle. So here, I mean, I'll go maybe here. We're gonna use the circle to build up the contour lines. So that's why I don't want them to be right beside. So there I have the six and I'll hold this up. So it's just kind of getting a starting point. And I use, I made the circles in the intersection of the grid. You can see right there. So they have a plate. So it already kind of looks map like. So then the next thing I do is we're going to just make concentric lines. So I dipped my pen in the ink and then I'm going to make concentric lines around the circle. So, and one of the things that is nice about the this traditional pen and ink is that 
you can change the pressure to get different kinds of lines. So if I wanted to get a smoother line, a smoother, darker line, I press hard, but if I wanna get a light line, and I'm gonna start making the lines a little wider apart as they get further away. And you'll have to figure out how much ink you need, like how often you have to dip in. And you can see I'm going up, so that's a little harder. So we'll go to the, I've just done five lines. I'll do six. And we'll go back, we'll come back to this later, but can you see that um, I, the space is getting gradually bigger. And that's how contour maps often work because the elevation changes gradually and then more extreme towards the top. So I'll just go around another one again to the six lines and just changing the space a bit each time. And I'm not trying to get it perfectly um, parallel. You see, I could change. I mean, this is, you know, an abstract drawing. So that's what's so great. We don't have to make it perfect. So we just continue doing these six lines. See, now I've changed it. I'm not this doesn't have to be gradual, like I am I made this one far apart and then this close. It's just, you know, to do the six lines. And if you do seven, it doesn't matter. I, I'm just giving you this as a starting point. And then my ink pen ran out of ink there. And every now and then you need to wipe off your nib because it picks up the fibers of the paper. So I just take the paper towel and wipe it off. Because if you find it's not flowing nice, that's often the reason. So just doing the six. And you just start to get a feel for how long how much ink it'll hold, but you should be able to do at least a few rings uh, before having to re-dip, like at least two. So each one of mine is slightly different. This one I'll make it, maybe I'll make them a little closer. We're just gonna keep building on this, so six. But what I'm also trying to get across here is that we're working on the building up the whole drawing at the same time. Like we're not just working on one area, we're going from area to area. And sometimes you have to kind of keep your hand off the page so it doesn't smudge the ink because the ink will still be a bit wet. So I'm just doing this quickly. And one of the things that you notice when you do, those of you who have looked at contour maps is that some of the lines are thicker and thinner and some of them are even more gray than black. So that's when we'll, we'll play around with that a little bit. So just um, hold these up. So I just have these six, kind of randomly placed circles. And then this is when we go into using our pencil. So I might, um, I'll use a B and you can draw inside. So you get some finer lines. So B is fairly light. So I'm gonna do a couple of Bs, but then I'll, maybe I'll, switch to 6B so you can see the difference. So 6B is quite dark. 
So I'll do a few. Might do a 6B here. And then, I mean, depending on how many pencils you have, I have a 9B, which is really kind of fun. So I'll do some lines in, in between the black lines. You can see just to kind of really build up the lines. And then, and it's not perfect. I'm just, and then I'll do some outside. So I'm doing about, I don't know, six or seven pencil lines all together. And you could ch keep changing the pencils just to make it look interesting. Um, like I, I have an HB pencil here. I mean, you think it, it's not much of a difference in H and a HB and a B, but you know, it's these subtle things that sometimes make drawings look really interesting. So then I'll do, I have a 7B. I'm kind of grabbing them randomly because basically what I just want to do is have variations of the lines so that, you know, this is going to be much lighter than that. So as the numbers of the line get bigger, the pencil gets darker. Here I smudged a little bit, but that's okay. So just, you know, randomly change the pencils. I mean, in an actual contour map, there would be like more purpose to why some light lines are lighter. There might be like kind of in between grades of land, like so. I'm just shifting different pencils just to have a few go on the, the outside. And then we could go back to our pen and nib. Now, if you just left it without wiping it, I would suggest just to dip it in the ink and then wipe it off. Because sometimes the ink starts drying and that helps. So we'll just go back and maybe do one more line around the circles. And some, you'll find that like here, it's gonna go off the page, so that's okay. And then the idea is you wanna have some of them meet. So that's what I mean those two meet. So you're just kind of building up gradually. We'll just do one line with the pen and then I'm gonna go back with the pencil. We'll sort of go back and forth from the pen and So I'm going to now take, so I want these two, I'm just using pens, sort of switching back and forth and I'm not worried about it. You know, you could see that that's not perfect. So then what you wanna do is now we're going to take our pen and just sort of create shapes in between. So not necessarily circles, but just these, kind of see I'm, what kind of shape fits in between. These are like the negative shapes. I'll hold this up. So this fits in between. And then see, I've got a smudge, but that's just gonna add character. So then here I'm going to fit a shape in between. So this is like maybe kind of flat land, whereas the circles are, could be hills. So it's just like whatever shape fits. 
sometimes you might just have like here, it might just be a small triangle. This will be a bigger triangle. I mean, there's not one way you could do this. Like you could also just keep making your circles bigger. And sometimes we do it like that. So basically I've created new shapes by drawing the, the shapes in between. So you could see, and then, so then what we'll do is just, you start filling those in with contour lines. And just play around with, you know, pressing down on your pen if you want to get a thicker line. And if you think, oh, I don't want to use the pen anymore, you could, you know, do it with the pencil as well. So you see, I'm just letting the that shape I created, I'm just going to keep filling it in with these concentric lines. And I'm doing it kind of messily just to let you know it's okay to be rough. And sometimes with these projects, it's fun just to do one for practice and then do another one once you get the idea of the project. But what I'm doing just to make it interesting is having some of my lines go really close to the other line and then some further apart. So here I'm gonna make it go really close and it's nice to have like lines that are a bit shaky, contrary to what you might think, because they just look more interesting. They look more like something you would find in nature. So I'll just do one up here. So you can see that I'm just doing concentric lines like we did with the circle, but I'm doing it in these new shapes that were made from the, you know, drawing in the negative shape. What's a little bit different is that with the circles, we started in the middle and went out with these shapes, we're starting at the edge and going in, which is gonna be something we'll do next uh, drawing. So you can switch to pencil and just like continue going until it's filled in. So the idea is, you know, why we're switching to pencil and then to pen is just that you get the nice variation in value. So some of the lines are gray and some of them are black. So I'm just filling this in. It's kind of mesmerizing. What's interesting is you often end up with these strong geometric shapes. Here I see, or well, maybe I'm gonna put a line, just adding a line, I thought that needed an extra line in there. And then here, I mean, there's many ways to do this. You could actually look at contour maps. I mean, you're not gonna necessarily see circles like this with the contour map they might be like more undulating. So then just to add some map like elements where your lines, the grid crosses, maybe draw attention to the grid a little bit by making these dots. You can also put one in the middle of the circle, but I'm just making, so this really makes it feel more map-like. So we're using the convention of a map to make a drawing. I'll just hold that up. So you could see they kind of seem like points of interest. So just I'm just adding them at the intersections 
mean, they could be, they don't necessarily have to be at the intersections. You could put them anywhere. You could even put them like in the middle of a square if you like. So then to get back to the, the grid, and this is the final thing we'll be doing, is we're gonna shade in some of the squares with pencil. So now we're just using pencil, but they become kind of like mini drawings. I'm just using the side of my pencil just to get a kind of even tone. I might go over it a couple of times. And again, use a variety of pencils. So this is an um, H pencil, which is really light. And we're not going to fill them all in, but it's just to kind of bring attention to the grid. I mean, I'm drawing them on a diagonal just so I like that, but you can, you know, if you want to, you can draw them vertical. Good to have some that are close together. And what makes it interesting at this point is just the different values. So by changing your pencil, like maybe this one's a 5B, but I might press a little harder. I'm not worried of getting perfect edge. So I'll just go in a few places and you could do this as many draw in as many squares as you want. And you could also, like you might go back in if you want it. I think, oh, maybe I want to put another line in between these circles. So you can sort of work back in if you want. Now I'll just hold it up so you can see how the, this nice contrast of these organic forms against uh, this geometric. So those two things are going on at the same time. And it's also a really nice kind of layering effect. So that's um, all we're going to do for this one. I mean, obviously, you can, you know, work more on it. Like, if I was to work more on this, I'd probably put a lot more fine lines, because I think that really adds to the drawing to have some little more detail, but that's just my idea. So anyways, this is um, our first abstract contour map. So we'll put away the ink, I'm just covering it. And then I do recommend when you're finished with the nib, just wipe it off and then separate it. So sometimes the this ink the nib could get corroded if it's left in there. We are gonna continue using pencils, but this time we're using, we're going to use um, a sheet of black paper. I almost find it kind of exciting to use white on black paper. So what we're gonna be, what you need for this one is the pencils. Well, like a range of pencils and then white conte and eraser. And this time we're gonna use a rag because the rag is a little softer. It's nicer sometimes to blend than uh, the paper towel. Okay, so this time we're gonna start a little bit different, but still with the idea of the contour map. So we're gonna start with a kind of oval but it could be somewhat wobbly shape in the middle. <laughs> uh, and then again, I'll make one that fits near the edge. So I'm just giving it a little bit of visual interest by you know, making my line a bit curvy. So the idea is you start with something in the middle and then that helps you define the composition. Well, it could be an island or something. And then, so I'm going to make probably five or let's see, yeah, maybe just five shapes and I'll hold it up. So, 
So I started with the shape in the middle and that helped me decide how these shapes will be made. And so then the contour drawing part is just to take the, the Conte and make lines. And you could play with the Conte a little bit, like if you use just the tip, you get one kind of line. Then if you use more like the side, I'm pressing down, you could see I'm, I can get a thicker line. You could also get a thick line by holding it down. I mean, just, you know, play around with different ways to use the Conte. Another way that sometimes people do is sort of roll it if you want it to get more of a wavy line. Because this is really about line drawing and also vary the distance between the lines. See if you can hold it really close, make some of the lines really close. That would be like when it, the elevation is more extreme. And then you just keep filling them in. So go back to the middle. I mean, there's no necessary order. So we're doing it. Last time we started with the circles and built from the inside out. Now we're building from the outside in. And I like some of the shapes you get. So it's a composition that was really structured around the center that didn't really know what it would look like, but I knew that I would use the center and then build out from it. And see, I'm trying to vary the lines a little bit. I could even press harder. I think the main variation that works really well with this is to have lines that are sometimes really close, almost touching. You can also change the pressure. If I want to get a really light line, I might just use the pressure really gently and just keep going. But you can see what I'm trying to get at here is having like some of these lines are closer and then some are farther apart. It just, you know, it makes a more visual, visually interesting drawing. I like the, the white on the black in part because it reminds me of um, drawing on a blackboard and something I still like doing, even though there's not that many blackboards around. And don't worry if you smudge because we're going to do some smudging after. See, I my sweater rubbed again. So, We'll just keep going. So we're filling the whole thing in with lines. And we're gonna end up with a beautiful line drawing. And one of the reasons I like to do this project is because you get some really confident looking lines. Like these lines, you know, they look really good, I think, because they're not hesitant. You know, you're just filling in the, the space. So I'm just kind of keep going. There, see, I smudged that, but that's okay. So what I want to show you is different things you could do with the Conte. So this Conte, white Conte, it's similar to like what we would call a hard pastel. So as opposed to a soft pastel. So I'm going to take a cloth and just smudge in some of the lines, you know, just I'm selective. So just maybe like this edge line and just do that in a few places. You don't want to do it everywhere. Maybe I'll do it, smudge this middle. 
And you could always redraw if you smudge too much, but we're using this as a way to get different kinds of lines. I'm not gonna do it everywhere. Like I'm gonna leave maybe some parts not smudge. Look at this nice white line. This I got from pressing really hard. So another way you can blend with um, Conte is you can use an eraser. Like if you just use your eraser really softly, you can get a sort of, it almost looks like a blurred line. See right there, I'll do a few of those. So we like to, you know, in Draw by Drawing, talk about different subjects. Both, we do both like more abstract and also representational. And the other thing to focus on is different ways to use the materials. Now we could use, since it's black, and I'm gonna use a graphite pencil, I might use a darker graphite pencil, like um, this is a 9B. You probably can't even see it, but I'll hold it up just to get, in some different lines. I mean, you don't necessarily have to do this, but it's just. Can you see it? It's just little, just sort of just adds a little visual interest. I can draw on top of the part that I've blended. And you hardly see it, but it's there. So here in the center, I smudged everything out. So I might come back and, you know, draw with some pencils. So then we're almost there. We're gonna do a few other things. Um, and if you find like you've, you blended it inadvertently with your, Leave. you could another thing you could do is just you know try blending a whole area right and then you could draw with your eraser so now I get some nice black lines so it's quite forgiving because you can even like when I put my fingers down to hold the paper I might get fingerprints, but I can just work it in. So this is really nice. We always enjoy drawing with an eraser. And then if you want, you could always come back and add some brighter lines. So I'm just, so the idea, I'll just hold it up. I'm creating a lot of variation of lines. So the drawing gets more and more interesting as I build it up. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to do a grid, but just something really simple, like um, when you do tic-tac-toe, for example, you know, you just make nine squares. Well, these will be rectangles. So I'm just using, the ruler and doing contour, tic-tac-toe. So we're doing, we're imposing the grid on top afterwards. And then the last step for this one is we have the grid on it. So now what you can do is play around with thinking about the individual squares. So for example, here, the middle one, I might alternate. So skip one, but I'm just doing it in this square. So I'm alternating filling in, but I'm stopping at here. Cause I want to, I, like when we did the graphite, filled in the graphite squares, we were drawing attention to the grid. So now I'm drawing attention to the grid and I don't necessarily have to do it everywhere. So for example, here, maybe I'll add lots of, lot more fine lines, but I'll just do it in this square. So I'm, I'm almost imagining that each of these individual squares are drawings. And then I could 
you know, soften some of the lines with the eraser, but just in this square. And maybe I'll do one where one of the squares, I just, I blend the whole square. And then I come back and erase the lines. So I get, but I just do it in the square. So we went from thinking of the whole drawing to now breaking it up. And I'm just doing it roughly. If you have one of those kind of eraser pens, that works nice. But so now we have a drawing that um, has individual squares, almost as if like you're honing in on this one area. So, so that's our black and white contour map. So I hope you enjoyed these exercises and that um, we'll see you sometime Wednesday morning, 10 to 11.30 AM. Okay, thank you, bye.